The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, is brought to you by, well, of course, you. If you want to learn more about how you can support the show, go to patreon.com slash expat2020. Hey everyone, welcome to The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. I'm your host, Expat. This is episode 38, along with my co-host, Dan. Dan, how are you doing today, man? Uh, I'm, oh, I'm alright, but I, I, I had my uh, my COVID vaccine jab. Yay! And <laughs> my arm hurts, and I've been a bit groggy. I'd, uh, yesterday I was in bed all day, because I had a massive headache. But other than that, yeah, I think I'm alright. How, how are you? What's, what's new there? Other than, uh... Having another earthquake, uh, I've been fine. We just uh, we had another small earthquake here. I mean, uh, ten years ago, as we've talked about on the show before, there was a major earthquake out here in Japan, of course, uh, off of the coast of the Tohoku region, which was a level ten, and mm. uh, many people died from the earthquake and from the uh, tsunami that uh, occurred because of the er- of the earthquake and. Uh, I mean, we've been we've been having aftershocks here and there yeah. for the past ten years, and uh, on Friday yesterday, my time here uh, during the workday, I was in uh, the office and I was at my desk, and uh, the room just started shaking again. It was a level three point five, so wow. which isn't so big, um, but still, I mean, another aftershock, and uh, I don't know, yeah. just uh, when is it ever going to end? It's like it's almost happening every week in frequency now, it seems like, over the past yeah. couple of months. Yeah, so uh, I'm kind of starting to worry a little bit that another big one might be coming. I, I, I just, I don't know, hopefully not, but I just, I kind of have that feeling, you know? Yeah. So, um, but I have a question for you. So you had your vaccine, Hello. so tell me uh about the side effects you've had because here in japan we still haven't gotten our vaccines yet um most most of the japanese population uh the elderly population is now getting their vaccines but you know the younger generation and uh and my age um we still haven't gotten ours yet so can you tell me a little bit about the side effects from the vaccine well so far i've had none uh, but there are there are possible side effects. I cut say so a couple of people I've worked with were properly put down with like a very intense flu for like three or four days. Like it's very short lived, but very very strong. Uh, yeah, flu like symptoms. Mm. Uh, some people obviously have like you know had uh, clots and far worse things happen to them. But um, yeah, on the whole, I've had I've had just a, a bad head, and like, by tomorrow I should be right as rain. Yeah, some yeah. people have been saying that uh, after the vaccine, they had like uh, chills and a fever for like. Oh yeah, shoot, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My girlfriend did. She was, uh, just, she was put on her ass for a day, and uh, yeah, she was absolutely frozen to death. Couldn't get warm, no matter how many layers and you know, wrapped up in bed, hundred blankets on, heater on full. Yeah, can't can't get past the the chills. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh. But you know, it's, it's it, it, thankfully that it, it's all very short lived. Like you know, my head it was a day. My mates uh, at work they had you know a really shitty uh, time for like a couple of days. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend was down for a day, so uh, yeah, it, it 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 is miserable. But it's thankfully it's 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 brief. So that's far. good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Good to hear. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting mine. Hopefully, it'll be sometime in the summer. Uh, so it's, yeah, you know, like every day, still wear a mask. No, yeah. no matter where I go. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's that's that is good. Yeah, um, it was so busy uh, when I went to get mine. Uh, so we have to book. Basically, we're doing it. We yeah, the same thing in most places in the world. We're doing it by age. So when you get to a certain age, an email goes out saying, "Hey, you're this age. Uh, come and get your jab." Yeah. So um, you don't need book a slot and you go there, but there was still like a hundred people. It was so busy. Like everyone just queuing up to get their jab. It was uh, it was nuts. Wow. But uh, it's a very efficient, very, very, very speedy process. So that's good. Yeah, just went in and had a chat about it, and uh, I have the AstraZeneca jab. Oh, 
so that's 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 that then now is that the two vaccine two shot or one shot there, these are, we're, i think in the uk we only have the two shot okay so, uh, even if you've got uh the pfizer one that's still two shots i believe i see I see. And the Johnson and Johnson one hasn't been cleared for use in the UK yet. Oh, so, I see. Um, and that's yeah. the one shot I think Johnson and Johnson or the Moderna so. I think it is or something like that. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. There's numerous variations, but yeah, they're all they're all largely the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. good to hear, I'm, man. So yeah, I'm uh, immune. Yeah, I'm, you're Im- you know, immune. Yeah. Well. Cool. I need my second one, but yeah. 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 Awesome. Woo. All right, so uh, right after this brief message, uh, Dan and I will be uh, talking about what we were uh, playing this past week after this brief message. Before Dan and Expat discuss what they have been playing, this episode of The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, will be going up on Patreon at patreon.com slash expat2020 in early access for the first three days after recording. So if you would like to support the show and become a patron at the entry tier one level at $1 per month and get early access to every episode and listen ad-free along with other perks, including exclusive post-show content after every show, plus special bonus episodes, please visit patreon.com slash expat2020 for further details. On Tuesdays each week, the podcast will be uploaded to all of the free podcast services, or you can find us on any podcast app for iOS or Android, Spotify, Amazon Music, and Expat's YouTube channel, Expat 2020 Gaming. Just download your favorite podcast app, or open Spotify and search for The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. Subscribe, follow us, post a review, and leave us questions, comments, and feedback if you like. If that feature is available there, and spread the word about the podcast. We also have a Discord called The Arena Podcast, where you can join and chat with the Arena Podcast community, and a website at expat2020.podbean.com where you can follow us and leave questions and comments as well. Finally, you can also follow us on Twitter at the Arena A-M-P-G-N-P, as well as on Instagram at the Arena underscore podcast. Now, back to the show. So Dan, uh, I've been playing uh, more of Judgment. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it, man. I, I love this game. I love the story. Uh, uh-huh. it's riveting. Uh, and it's really funny just walking around the streets of, uh, Kabuki show or Komodo show in the game. But I mean, uh, I didn't get a chance to comment on this last week, but, uh, mm. just like in the other Yakuza games, you know, you have like the, as you're walking on the street and you're walking past people, these people have these like comment bubbles above yeah. them. And, yeah. and some of these comments are so funny, man. It's like the one girl's walking past you and she's like, I'm wondering if I'm ever going to have a boyfriend or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, and this guy's like walking at night and he's like, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, that, uh, that, uh, triple date or whatever, uh, group date we had, it didn't go so well, you know? It's <laughs> nice. Yeah. I remember there's one guy walking around. He says, I want a hot mess of a girlfriend. Yeah. 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 And I thought that was brilliant. That, <laughs> yeah. that stuck with me. Uh, yeah. 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 But most it's it's it, it, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, no, go, go ahead, man. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that how and a lot of it is you're reading their text messages as well. Like weirdly, like yeah. you could read what they're texting as well because everyone's on their phones because obviously it's modern day Tokyo and then yeah, yeah, kind no, a, it's, it's kind of a shot to watch dogs in that regard. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, it's nice. It's uh, it's very it's very on point. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's like the only type of fast travel system you really have in that game is uh, getting in a in a taxi and going somewhere. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that that can get uh, you know a bit burdensome at times, and you know I have to well, spend a lot of your money to. Uh, you shouldn't. You yeah. shouldn't be using them. Yeah, yeah, I don't. That, that's how you build XP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't so much. Only uh, on certain occasions when, like, I I'm just hey, I want to get to this point as as quickly as possible. Um, but you, usually I just run. Yeah, uh, that's I just how you build dash. XP and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um. It's it. Have you noticed that that <laughs> that your mission objectives are always on the opposite side of the map? Yeah, yeah. So like, someone will go, "Hey, go to this bar, at the very north point of, this, of the map." So you yeah. go there and you go, "Okay, we well, need to go towards this guy, at the very southernmost point of this map." So yeah. You've done all the bloody map, and they go, "Oh, you need to go to this guy in the northeast." So you run all yeah. the way to the northeast. So you just end up just crisscrossing this bloody city, just killing. Get. I think, yeah. So I I maintain the game's about twelve hours long. Yeah, if you take out all the bloody running backwards and forth across the city, it's actually yeah. really short. But yeah, man, life it is a belter though. Yeah, it's a great game. I, I'm in chapter two now. 
So, uh, right. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, uh, chapter one, I just completed, uh, you know, the courtroom scene. And then after that, uh, going into more investigative mode. Uh, so, you know, and that one chase, uh, the yeah. chase scene at the beginning oh of, God. uh, yeah. Chapter two, that was really good, but, uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it, man. And I played a little bit of, uh, uh, destroy all humans, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. throwing some cows around in the pasture yeah. and stuff like yeah. that, you know, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's a fun game to play. So, uh, how about you? What have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing uh, Denji to Go again, which is uh, still uh, amazing, still loving it. And uh, following on from our conversation last week, I've dived back into the world of Yakuza. Ah, yeah. And I've started playing Yakuza Kiwami. Uh, <laughs> Yakuza, the, the one, well, the remaster. Yes, the remaster of the first game. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's still really, really good. They've made some changes to it to make it more in line with um, Zero. So, like, uh, there's done a few things to tweak the combat and stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, it's still it's still awesome. It still fills with murderous rage. Yeah, um, <laughs> there's no game on earth that gets me as furious as bloody um, y- the, y- the Yakuza ser- Yakuza series does. Yeah, really pisses me off. Yeah, because um, yeah. some of the fights later on are just are just just so ridiculous. Yeah, and. It's amazing, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, like, some of the collision detection in the combat is outrageous. Uh-huh. Like, you'll fight some bosses, and, you like, you'll clearly dodge their attack. Yeah. It'll still clip you somehow by friggin' magic, and it's yeah. just like, oh. And yeah. the endless stun locking. But other than that, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. Yeah, um, just like in Judgment, uh, I yeah. was uh, in that, uh, the Kansai Yakuza's uh, office. Yeah. You know, and uh, fighting that one boss, and then he pulls out the the sword. I'm just like, oh, oh shit, you know. <laughs> it's like, but I I was able to beat him, but uh, still, you know, uh, you pick up a lot of damage when you get hit by. Oh, it's nuts. I mean, yeah, uh, chapter two, that's nothing. I mean, later on, it's good. You're going to be screaming. You're going to be tearing controllers and off. It's just, you know, it gets crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it really. Yeah. It, what what I really like about this, it did like of uh, judgment. It. Uh, mm. You know, with the 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 turf war between the uh, the Kamurocho Yakuza and the Kansai Yakuza, you know, mm. kind of has that feel of Yakuza Zero because wasn't it Yakuza Zero is based in yeah. Osaka, right? Yeah, yeah, it, you flip between the two, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, uh, y- y- I think about it uh, about that a lot when I'm playing yeah. Judgment. So, uh, yeah, no, it's it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but again, it, it, you know, you, you, you've you've got to. I mean, I'm, I was I was finished playing it just now. I I rage quit last night, and I lost about three hours of progress. Okay, oh, I hadn't saved my game, so it's like for, for but um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, you got you, uh, yeah, half of it is just being prepared, making sure you got plenty of you know uh, vitamins and um, Genki drinks. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I'm not using weapons enough. I've decided. Because I, I got my ass absolutely handed to me last night, but then they all had swords, and I was just wailing in on my fists. So yeah, I need to I need to use more weapons in the game. I think yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. But god damn, is it friggin' annoying? Yeah, looks good though. Bloody hell, I did a nice job. But you you can tell is that well, I mentioned I, I streamed it the other night uh, on Twitch. Uh, mm-hmm. when I start the game Twitch. Um, I streamed the first a couple of hours of um, Yakuza. And I yeah. talked about some of the differences between that and zero and a bit about, you know, lore and stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah. watch that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So all of you out there, go check that out. Press start check the game out. on uh, Twitch. So, uh, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the news, Dan. Uh, the first uh, story we want to talk about tonight. Uh, PlayStation supposedly has 25 new IP uh, yeah. in the pipeline. Um and uh, yeah, in a piece from Wired, actually, uh, the studio head of PlayStation, Herman Hulse, noted that there are over 25 diverse PlayStation exclusives in development, mm-hmm. and nearly half of them uh, are are belonging to new IPs. Uh, this uh, should hopefully ease concerns about PlayStation uh, and their fans, uh, showing that there's a bright future. But I mean... Of all of these 25 IPs, I mean, how many of them are actually, you know, triple A? I mean, how many of them are actually like smaller indie titles? Because we have the game Kina Bridge of Spirits. That's going to be coming next month. That's more of a smaller game, uh, not triple A in scope. But uh, 
I mean, and with the shortages of the PS5 uh, for the next couple of years, probably. I mean, uh, how many of these games are actually going to be PS5 titles? I mean, I'm sensing that a lot of what he's saying here about these 25 new IPs, a lot of these might possibly be cross-gen, where it's going to be PS4 and PS5. I don't know. What do you think, Dan? I don't know. I think I think once the crossover's happened, I, I think any games that have gone like in development or quite early in development, because let's all these all these twenty five games will be you know very early. I imagine very early on, so they'll all be PS five. I reckon. Hmm. Um, I think they'll want they'll want to get well. They can't really at the minute because they're none available to sell. But yeah. I reckon they'll want to bin off the PS four ASAP. Yeah. So you'd only see third party support for the PS four going on. I'd reckon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good. Yeah. New yeah. Game. Well, those- yeah, well, those some of the titles for this year, like Ratchet and Clank's a lock. That's coming out next month. Uh, Ratchet yeah. and Clank rip, Rift Apart. But, mm-hmm. you know, games like, uh, what is it? Uh, God of War Ragnarok. That's not going to come out this year, probably. That's going to be next year, probably. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah. Uh, there's a possibility that might be pushed into 2022. And then, of course, the the racing game. What is it? Uh, um, Lord knows. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what is the racing game for Sony? I know it's uh what is it? Gran uh, Turismo, no? Gran Turismo 7. Yeah, right. that has right. already been postponed into next year. So, yeah. uh I I I don't know if a lot of these games are going to be coming out in the early stages of the, you know, generation or not, but uh, All right. we shall see. Yeah. Um but yeah, uh anyway, that's good news for uh PlayStation it fans is. and uh yeah, uh a lot to look forward to. Uh um I, I do want to mention one thing, not so much PlayStation related, but of course, yeah. uh, Resident Evil 8, Resident Evil Village is, of course, available Yay. on PlayStation. Um, but uh, our uh, friend of the show and uh, our patron and uh, friend, Burlyman Gaming, has been playing Resident Evil 8. And uh, unfortunately, uh, he wanted me to mention this on the show. He has experienced numerous crashes of the game Mm. on his ps5 now he's particularly saying that it's probably on capcom's end because he purchased the disc well he has Mm. the disc it's a optical disc copy of the game it's not a digital copy so Mm -hmm. he said that there's a particular point in the game like when you're at the uh like at a storefront or whatever the game crashes and Mm. he was streaming it and it crashed four different times on one stream and then he yeah. streamed it again, and it crashed another four times. So he's uh, been in contact with Capcom um, to try to get a refund or to try to yeah. get maybe a digital copy uh, so that he can continue to play the game. But uh, I just wanted to point that out because, you know, um, there might be some people out there that are thinking of purchasing the digital, not the digital, I'm sorry, the uh, optical version of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and so maybe there might be a problem Um some other players that Burley has talked to said they have no issues with yeah. him. But uh, yeah, so that's something that uh, might be a possible red flag and, uh, you know, something that Capcom needs to address. But uh, anyway, mm. I wanted to throw that out there. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so no. uh, good news for uh, the future of PlayStation with all these new games that are going to be coming out. And also, I want to talk about, uh, I was talking about this on the uh, uh, the Week in Review live stream I was doing last night on uh, twitch.tv slash expat 2020. Uh, new DualSense controller colors are on the way. So there's going to be a midnight black version of the ps5 dualsense controller and that's going to uh come in at 69.99 and there's also going to be a cosmic red color uh also uh coming out as well but that's going to be a little more expensive the cosmic red uh uh ps5 controller is going to be 74.99 so i don't know why it's like red plastic yeah (laughs) So I don't know why it's got to be five dollars more, but uh, yeah. my bullshit sense is tingling. Yeah, so uh, they're going to be coming uh, starting in June. So uh, participating uh, participating retailers, uh, so you can be able to order those next month. But uh, what I want to talk about a little bit, Dan, is uh, uh. you know 
Xbox, for example, has for their controllers, they have what's called design labs. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. But, I have, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Design labs is really cool where you can actually custom configure the colors of your, you know, of your controllers and have them, you know, uh, shipped out to you. It's like, why doesn't Sony do this? Because yeah. it's a gimmick. Hmm doesn't really i i, I don't know it, 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 it's also phenomenally expensive yeah yeah I don't, yeah that, that's not a cheap service so i don't know i mean i guess they could but why why bother it's just easy to do it yourself really yeah um, you know uh yeah I, there i'm not sure it's a concern i mean you know famously they'd bring up loads of different colors and you know interesting designs anyway so maybe this don't feel the need to have a custom thing hmm. what's the gun right let's have a look uh custom xbox controller yeah what's interesting about this too is that you know they're they're bringing these out when it's still really really difficult for people to to get a hold of a ps5 so uh yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. but uh yeah oh you the 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 build your own is currently down so you can't oh really you can't do that Mm. but yeah okay man yeah, I think right, well, the design lab program came out during the the Xbox One generation. Yeah, yeah, it's been so, yeah. Well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so but just can't use it. I don't know. At the moment, yeah. So I think you were commenting during my live stream last night. You want you wanted the red one. Yeah. Well, the, not if they're going to grift me for an extra fiver for it. Piss off! I'll make my own. Just I'll go <laughs> buy a can of red spray paint and some. There you go. Freaking, varnish and do it myself yeah it's mental that's the thing i mean why didn't you just spray paint it you know just use some What's colors that? and there you this go like yeah. people mind about the ps5 being white well pop the covers off spray and black and put them back on again what's, yeah. what's the issue yeah it's a, it's a five minute job yeah same with the uh the you know the the covers you know for the, yeah. the actual face plates of the ps5 yeah yeah Set that. Yeah. So, yeah yeah weird Okay, so moving on to the next story, uh, Microsoft is uh, going to be doing uh, a new program. It's going to be a very limited program at first, but uh, hopefully this will try to offset some of the problems people are having to uh, to actually get an Xbox Series X or a Series S. Uh, it's going to be called the Console Purchase Pilot. And uh, right. the thing about this, it's going to be open to Xbox insiders, but only a specific uh, lot of uh, insiders. So the Xbox Insider program is like a free beta testing platform that Xbox has for like new games and things like that. So uh, so right away, it's only going to be uh, available to a limited amount of uh, insiders. Uh, but uh, they'll be able to check their insider hub, uh, those that are, are in the program, uh, in the existing Xbox console or Windows 10 to see if they've re- received an invite. And then after signing up, uh, gamers will have the option of re- uh, receiving an alert when an ac- Xbox is available for purchase. And of course, they'll have uh, to actually jump on that chance before all the consoles have been taken. But mm. this at least is a step in the right direction to uh, to uh, counter the, uh, the, the problems with scalping. Uh, that's been going on, uh, you know, scalpers buying the consoles uh, and uh, those out there don't have the ability to purchase uh, an Xbox Series X and same with the PlayStation 5. So uh, I don't know. What do you think of this, Dan? I think it, I think this is a step in the right direction. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, very limited to only a specific number of Xbox insiders. Um what do you think? Do you think PlayStation will be jumping on this as well? Possibly, I, but I, I don't. I don't want to be rude, but um, like Xbox isn't selling out the way the PS5 is. They don't really need to do this. I mean, I'm looking on it right now, and I, I could buy from here. I could buy a Series X right now. Hmm. So I think this is this is optimistic of Microsoft going. Oh no, us too. Oh, we're having massive stock shortages. I mean, you know, we're being outsold by PS5 like four, five to one. Um, yeah. So we're going to do this program too. Um, this is something that Sony needs to adopt. Yeah. Um, it, well, it's, it's too late. It's too far gone. Um, but, does Does PlayStation have an insiders program? Well, no, but you could. I suppose they could mess you, ping you through the for, through your PS4 or something, and say, "Hey, you know, da, 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 
add your name to a, our, our interest list and so on. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, there's no specific program like that, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, on related news, Sony have said this is going to continue until 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good, good luck getting a PS5 this year. Yeah. That's, yeah. I've got unfortunate I've lost all interest. I've lost all interest. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dan, you still got your PS4, man. So, hey. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. And there's nothing on the PS5. So to keep it. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm fine uh, with yeah. not having one. Um, but I mean, yeah. this is this is good on good on Xbox for at least you know starting something to to try to get you know uh, people that you know uh, might not have a chance to get one ah, to absolutely. actually have a chance to to jump on it when there are some stock uh, that becomes available. Uh, but, you know, so. again, it's like it's a bit me too, and it's a bit like you know, oh yeah, we, it, it does seem a bit like yeah, come on now. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you, you aren't you aren't in this. Let's not let's not kid ourselves. They're not in the same league as Sony right now. Yeah, like yeah, you know everyone. Like I I don't hear anything about scalpers like getting an Xbox, but everyone's like scalpers. Are all the scalpers are buying all the PS fives. Yeah, and Xbox is like, nah, it's all right, it's all right. But we'll, we'll focus on the PS five. So it's it's kind of cute. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just what I'm worried about, kind of switch and focus a little bit away from xbox and playstation but what i'm worried about is when the switch 2 comes out boy yeah i mean i'm wondering if scalpers are gonna try to take advantage of that as well of course they will yeah yeah, yeah. Be an absolute shit show as well yeah um but then there's something they'll have to find some way around it i yeah. guess that's nuts um yeah. also can we just point out Fuck all scalpers. Yeah. And I yep. hope you get the worst kind of rectal <laughs> cancer. And it takes you years of searing agony to die <laughs> while your family watches on crying. Why did rectal cancer come? Because can you imagine anything worse than being eaten out from the arse? <laughs> like your your own ass is plotting to kill you. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not joking. I genuinely hope that. I've got more respect for friggin' drug dealers and kid fiddlers <laughs> than I have for scalpers. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, fucking kill yourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was gonna say this podcast is starting to become like an anatomy podcast. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. All well, right, um, that'd be awesome. Okay, but, so uh, the next. Oh, did you want to say something else? I was just gonna say, yeah, no, no, no. But I'm finished. I'm finished cursing people to death. Okay, um, but I was thinking like about about the switch again. Yeah. The switch last month outsold the other yeah. two machines put together. Just. Yeah. It the, don't the the Switch Pro, the Switch 2, forget about it. Yeah. Forget about it. they're not yeah. going to release it. They don't need yeah. to. They're not going to go oh, all you idiots who just like it's been the number one selling console. But they will out. though. They will. They will. I don't think Let's, they will. I don't think they will. Really? No. Really? They don't, they don't need to. Why bother? Yeah. If you've got something that's still they they don't care. Yeah, I agree with like, you there. Yeah. Like, they people, don't need people to. People are buying yeah. this machine by the billion they don't they don't friggin need to release a new they're not gonna they're yeah. not gonna they're gonna keep going as long as they can get away with it and when when the split second it drops off they'll go right switch to switch pro switch yeah. pro is more likely than switch to for sure yeah. um but uh there's no way they don't they just simply don't need to it would it would be suicide yeah they, they should just keep on keep on uh as many switch sales as they can get and then they'll go okay right yeah we shall Here's see yeah Okay, in the next story, uh, Xbox is going to be celebrating its 20th anniversary in November, uh, along well, with Halo. Yeah, 20 years, for Christ's well, sakes. I mean, remember Bill Gates coming on on stage and, uh, you know, showing off the original Xbox, man. Unbelievable how time flies. So, well, uh, it's the 20th anniversary of the announcement, not the machine itself. Yeah, I think so. It's not the Microsoft. Uh, it's not the Xbox 20th, 20th anniversary. It's yeah. the announcement of the Microsoft Xbox anniversary. Yeah. So, like November will be. Yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The actual machine has got you've got a couple of years, and well, you've got a year until that's the. Uh, yeah. That's the uh, yeah. anniversary of the actual machine itself. So this, yeah. this is this is a weird anniversary. Yeah. So they're planning to celebrate. You know. By uh, well, first of all, the uh, the Xbox Gear Shop uh, was updated and it has a uh, uh, the first wave of official 20th anniversary merchandise, uh, like a themed wallpaper that you can download for free. 
Yeah. And also, uh, players can also register for the Xbox Fan Fest uh, to participate in the celebration, which will include activities, Fan Fest gear, and a digital experience. It'll be coming later mm. this year. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, I mean, close to 20 years now. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, for what's us, your, uh, year. yeah. Sorry. So, what's your, uh, best memory of the Xbox in these past 20 years, almost 20 years now? Blah. Oh, 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 uh, oh, I don't know. Playing, playing Jade Empire on the original Xbox was really, really good. That's a very, very good game. Yeah. yeah. Um, trying to be an Xbox gamer in Japan, which is impossible. <laughs> um, impossible. Uh, I remember that a lot. I just, just yeah. desperately looking for bloody Xbox games to play. Yeah. When I moved out there, uh, impossible, absolutely impossible to be an yeah. Xbox game in Japan. Yeah, that's um, another story in itself, man. I mean, yeah. it's like uh, me. I mean, yeah, I, I'm a multi-platform gamer. I love PlayStation. I love, I love Xbox. I love Nintendo. But I mean, yeah, being an Xbox gamer out here in Japan is very, very difficult. It is. Yeah, it is. and it's it's funny. It's like up until recently. Mm. Uh, just before the Series X and the Series S was launched, they were actually in the major, you know, electronic stores here in Japan, like Yodobashi and stuff. They yeah. still had displays of the old, the or the the very launch Xbox One with a Connect. Mm. <laughs> Can you believe that? Like in 2019, yeah, you know, they still had like Connects. That you could actually get with an Xbox One, the original oh. Xbox One. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of, uh, yeah, go ahead, man. How overwhelmingly shit the Connect is. Yeah. We were um, uh, so at the center. We're, we're opening soon. We're opening next weekend. Uh, awesome. And we're looking for looking for ways for people to do things hands free. So we thought, I know, we'll get the Connect out. So we all we all scab, scab, rubble around to get a Connect set up, and we put on um, the Star Wars game. Uh huh. I, I've never played Connect because it's dog eggs and I've got no interest in it. <laughs> yeah. So this is the first time I've ever played on Connect and holy shit, how yeah. do they ever try and sell that? Well, I think it's when they scandalous. When, when the Xbox One originally came out, what was it? The launch yeah. there was a launch title. What was it Rise Son of Rome? And they were actually yeah. pushing the Connect with that game. Because you could yeah. use it. Yeah, but uh yeah. It is a nightmare. I mean, the, on the 360, it's... But then, you know, the, famously, the X, the uh, the Kinect that came out wasn't the Kinect that they demoed. And, you know, the original development Kinect had, like, processors in and, like, had hard AI in, encoded into it. So it's actually really, really good. Yeah. But the one they released to the public was literally just a camera. Yeah. Yeah. And all the, all the processes had to be done in the machine itself, which led to, of course, it being a complete shit show. Yeah. But, oh, my God, it's terrible. Yeah. I cannot believe they went with that. Yeah, and well. desperately tried to push it like oh you've and like yeah on the Xbox One oh you've got to use it it's an ins- essential part of the that Xbox a, One experience that was a killer that was a that killer was, that was absolutely nuts yeah that yeah that was what helped PlayStation jump ahead with mm. the PlayStation Four I mean you know that the did. pushing that connect and uh, you know this is like uh, a cable cable TV box along with a video game console. People didn't care about that. They didn't give a shit. Yeah, that was another weird one. Yeah, yeah. It's been all in one entertainment suite. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, PlayStation 4 just jumped on that, man. They're like, we're just we're just for the gamers. It's mm. games, games, games. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. So but uh I mean now, you know, Xbox is making a comeback, and of course with Game Pass and everything, that's a big uh jump forward for them. So uh It'll be interesting to see how that plays out in the future here. But uh, yeah, I mean, the 360 generation was, you know, very, very successful for Xbox. And and um, I I think one of my favorite games uh, through the years of the Xbox, I mean, you know, I, I've played PlayStation more than I have Xbox. But I mean, Halo mm. 2 was one of my favorites uh, of the Halo series, um, you know, is had a lot of cinematic, uh, d- you know, uh, cut scenes and all. But uh you know, it was very fun to play. So, uh, okay. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, uh, anyway, uh, download that themed wallpaper. You can download it for, <laughs> for free. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Hold so. on. Just don't, don't all do it at once. You'll crash the servers. Just, <laughs> go, just take your time. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on. So the next story, uh, 
basically Ubisoft <coughs> is shifting away from its traditional strategy of releasing three to four premium AAA titles every year, but it plans to launch quote high end free to play and quote games for all its biggest franchises. So <laughs> I don't know, man. So, um, the cycle begins again. All right. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> Ubisoft's chief financial officer, Frederick Dugo, uh, said, quote, in line with the evolution of our high quality lineup that is increasingly diverse, we are moving on from our prior comment regarding releasing three to four premium AAA titles per year. Uh, it is indeed no longer a proper indi uh, indication of our value creation dynamics. For example, our expectation for Just Dance and Writer's Republic are consistent with some of the industry's AAA performers. And he goes on to say, quote, additionally, we are building high-end free-to-play games to be trending towards AAA ambitions over the long term. And that uh, this is purely a financial communication evolution and doesn't change the fact that we continue to expect a high cadence of content delivery, including powerful premium and free to play new releases. End quote. So, Ugh. I, I don't know, man. I think this is bad news. I think. Um, I mean, did you did you ever play Hyperscape? No, I don't know what it is. What's Hyperscape? Hyperscape is another. It's a free to play game. It's kind of like uh, like a Fortnite, but. More oh, like, okay. uh, kind of like you jump into. Uh, oh, it's another first person battle first royale. Person How battle royale. fucking original. Yeah. Jesus. That See, this is what... tanked. Good. Literally tanked. Don't but bother. Still... We've got Fortnite. It's done. Yeah. Fortnite, is, that's it. Yeah. Everyone else give up and go. Except for Apex. Apex is doing really, really well. Yeah. Everyone else give up and go home. Right. But like season two, season three has been coming out, and I just. I feel like this is going to continue and they're going to start pumping out more of these types of games and traditional gamers that want the single player experience like you and I, we're going to be left in the dust. I mean, because they're just, they're thinking about the, the monetary figures and Hey man, we're going to make a ton of money off of gamers, making more Fortnite type of titles, things like that. I don't know, man. Yeah, uh, it's 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 the same cycle like we've seen like last three generations of like something gets big, and then so we're going to focus all of our all of our efforts on this one thing. It's not going to work out. We'll wait for the next thing to rock up. Yep. And it's just it's just another example of that it's just it's just so boring. Yep. And like, sorry, my nose is running. Um, it's just the same old it's the same old crap, and it's it's this what this won't work either. Yeah. And there'll be some new thing that uh, that will be what we'll be focusing our efforts on, and blah blah blah, free to play, blah blah blah. Yeah, I don't, go, go, go nuts, go nuts. It's not, it's not for me. I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be there'll be its audience, but yeah, I'm with you. Just yeah, meh, who cares? And like next year, they're coming out, or later this year, they're coming <laughs> out with that division spinoff called uh, Heartland, and that's yeah. going to be one of those free to play titles where you're going to have like you know, you know, like multiplayer aspects and everything to it. Where you just jump in and I don't know, man. I'm just it's not for me, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, who does anyone even friggin' care about bloody Ubisoft now? I mean, aren't they aren't they a bit of a a, a joke now? I mean, aside from like like you said, like Assassin's Creed. Yeah, like that's all you know them for. Like, Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. Far Cry, yeah, yeah. So and like, the and the. Uh, for example, well, the division, <coughs> but uh, like uh, well, Ghost Recon nice. and uh, you know, like the uh, what oh, is it, God, the Rainbow yeah. Six Siege. You know, the we all know. Oh, Siege has been all right. That's the only success yeah. I've had. Uh, division wasn't that great. Watch Dogs Legion absolutely disappeared within three minutes of coming out. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. it was like Watch Dogs Legion comes, comes out, comes out, and like literally three days after launch, everyone yeah. had forgotten about that game. And that's kind of interesting because there were some elements to that game that were really interesting. I mean, uh, mm, mm, you know, mm. on paper, you know, talking about yeah. how you could play no buzz, as any, fun. you know, there yeah. any traditional NPC. Actually, you could play as that character now. So yeah, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. But then, yeah, and like, who's like, oh, brilliant, oh, oh brilliant, Lube, you, oh, it's great, I can't wait for them to go, oh, free, free to play, oh, Ubisoft, great. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what, okay, yeah. fine. But I think this is going to be 
I mean, moving forward, you're going to see a lot more of this, not just Ubisoft. I mean, you know, uh, EA is going to be doing a lot more of this as well. Uh, you know, Beth- Bethesda, possibly with Microsoft, you know, being under their umbrella now, they might start doing more of this. Who knows? You know, with uh, the Fallout games, you know, like Fallout 76 was kind of an example of that. But, uh, but I, I mean, I mean. Yeah. If it, if it works, that's awesome because you know a lot of people a lot of people play these free to play games and pay nothing and they yeah. they get quite far and do quite well out of them you know and yeah. the, the game's still successful enough to make money for the uh, for the uh, the company themselves so uh, yeah. it's a possibility but then it just it just screams of like it's going to be full of microtransaction and buy this buy that yeah. and fake currencies and all the other things yeah. that just that's the major problem yeah but then they're not they're not for us they're not for us crusty old fucks they're meant for you know kids and people not, and mobile players yeah. You know, uh, so that yeah, the, what they don't care what we think because we don't play these games, we don't spend money in these games anyway. We want the real, actual, real games, proper games, yeah. not this shit. Yeah. So, yeah, fair play. But again, yeah, it it, it is strange how it's a uh, you know, it's the same old thing. Yeah, you know, multi, uh, single player is dead, so all we're only gonna make multiplayer games, blah blah blah, and all this other these cycles we keep going through of. Yeah. The next big thing is this, and everyone tries it. It doesn't work out because if yeah. everyone's doing it, the same as no one's doing it, market saturated, no one cares, no one's interested, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Poor studios get in the middle and get shut down, through it, no fault of their own, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. Uh, repeat to fade. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But they'll still make Assassin's Creed, so don't worry. Yeah, for me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a big yeah. Assassin's Creed guy, so yeah. Yeah, fair play. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and move on. So uh, our topic of the show this week is about uh, games that were announced way too early, untimely announcements. So uh, I, I want to start by talking about a couple of games that I remember uh, that were announced but never came to fruition, or they haven't oh, yet. So many. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dan, do you remember the game uh, Dead Island Two? I do remember Dead Island 2. I remember it very well. Oh my god. I mean, do you remember I mean the was it in 2014 at Gamescom, I think it was. They came out with the trailer for that. Yeah. And it was an amazing trailer. I mean, this guy, yeah. you know, running on an island, you know, he's jogging and everything, and then he turns yeah. into a zombie and everything starts crashing around him and everything. Yeah. That game's never come yeah. out yet. And it still so, has a release date of like December 31st, 2021. Can you believe that, man? I mean, uh I- it obviously, you know, it, it's been, I, I, well, there's been rumors that it's been, it's been demolished and restarted numerous times now. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah, I, I played the first Dead Island. It was okay. Yeah. yeah. That, that's as far as I can say about it, really. Yeah. And I think, uh, well, I'm guessing the key here is that they just made this game and it's exactly the friggin' same as the first one. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. And they've scrapped it a couple of times to get it uh, right again. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So six, six, seven years into development. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then another uh, game we we were just talking about Ubisoft, like Beyond Good and Evil Two. That game oh, was yeah. announced like two, three years ago now already, and Ubisoft in their conference call the other day was saying yeah. it's it's not even close to being ready yet. Oh, it's no, still it years be. off. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bethesda with uh, Elder Scrolls Six. That's another example. That's going to be a game that's going to be like years away. Yeah. Uh, and then another one I want to mention, Elden Ring. You remember Elden Ring? Is the George R. R. Martin uh, game that's oh, supposed to be coming? Right, right. Yeah, that was announced yeah, yeah. like uh, they just mentioned like over seven hundred days ago. That was announced, and wow. there's been rumors that that game might actually be canceled. Um, uh, we don't know yet if that's going to happen. Hopefully not. But I mean, that's a game that's probably going to be years and years off. So. Yeah. yeah, and don't mm-hmm. forget Metroid Prime Four. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, you're four years, beloved four Metroid years. Prime. <laughs> We've heard nothing in four bloody years, yeah. Except the awesome, awesome news that uh, Retro Studios are back involved in it, which is brilliant. Yeah, because uh, they made the first three. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, and another Ubisoft game, obviously, and uh, it's our, uh, of course, uh, thumbnail this week for our YouTube uh, thumbnail, Skull and Bones. You remember Skull and Bones, right? Ubisoft's uh, oh, kind of like a thing. multiplay pro- uh, pirate game. Yeah, that's... yeah, that was in the news last week. Oh, it's been pushed back again, hasn't it? Pushed back to again. No, yep. no discernible release date. That's right. Um, yep. Shit. 
Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. So it I, does make you wonder. Um, yeah, the, I mean, the Dead, the Dead Island one's really baffling because how hard is it to have a game where you run around decapitating zombies on an yeah. island? Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, it, I'm sure there's some amazing videos about what exactly is going wrong with that on uh, on YouTube and live, but um, you'd think, bloody hell, how hard can it be? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah like 2014, man, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I said that, that, that super, and we've, we've talked about this before though, super slick bullshit um, CGI trailers. Mm-hmm. That's all I had to show, like, Dead, Dead Island 2 coming soon. Yeah. And this really slick, fancy uh, uh, CG trailer. Yeah. Uh, no actual gameplay for it. It's just the, the CG trailer, just absolutely telling us nothing about the game itself. Yeah. And you would think that these companies would learn from this, especially after what's happened with Cyberpunk this last year. And uh, you kind of wonder if uh, this well, yeah. year with E3 uh, coming up soon, and we're going to be covering, you know, the stuff going on at E3, if there's going to be some new announcements that you're going to scratch your head and say, how how many years is this going to be in development for before we actually see anything? Mm, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just... <laughs> It's like, when are they ever going to learn, man? I mean, they're probably never going to learn because, uh, you know. Yeah, it's, that's fair. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's 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 crazy, isn't it? It's cray-cray. Yeah, yeah. What can you do? Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, you, the risk, uh, you know, of announcing games too early and then you make a first impression that's, it's very, very hard to change. So yeah, you know it's that's the that's the thing, you know. And, well, it's uh, impossible to manage expectations. So, right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And and that's the you know the lesson from cyberpunk. You know, it's like mm, uh, mm. you know, uh, yeah. That's like fifteen quid on PC now. Yeah. That's that's hit bargain. That's you know that's hit bargain min prices already. That's yeah. Speaking of bargains, I mean this yeah. this doesn't have to do with the the topic, but uh, like uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Uh-huh. You know that just came out. If people want to buy that, don't pay sixty dollars for it. Uh, uh-huh. All you need to do is, if you're an Xbox uh, Game Pass, uh, for example, Game Pass uh, Ultimate subscriber, of course you have you have a subscription, uh, you know, automatically with EA, uh, uh-huh. like with EA Play. But if you <coughs> If you upgrade that subscription to a EA Play Pro subscription Oof. for fifteen dollars a month, bloody hell! You'll get the Legendary Edition. Oh, Bing bong. You pay fifteen dollars. You only pay for one month of the subscription. Boom! You get you get the Mass Effect Legendary Edition for fifteen dollars. Why pay sixty? Mm. You know. Mm, yeah. That's so fair. that's one way to get around paying the sixty dollars, basically. But that means you're still for that month you're still paying like yeah. thirty four or forty dollars on Xbox and Xbox thingy thing thing. Yeah. Thing. But I mean, yeah, but it's less than paying sixty dollars up front. That's true. That's yeah. true. Too many subscription services. Yeah. It's stupid. Yeah. Well, just like with the uh, the you know, the cable services, you know, uh, services yeah. like Netflix and Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, you know, Hulu. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be the same with games. Unfortunately, you got Game Pass, and then probably PlayStation's going to come out with something. Nintendo already has theirs, which uh, it's very, it's well... still, you know, limited, of course. But uh, the amount of Famicom and or mm. you know the NES and Super NES games you can actually download. But uh, yeah, yeah. So there's more that's going to come out, and there's rumblings about Steam games actually coming to oh, console yeah. now, too. They're, they're, yeah. They're, they're... Have a big announcement at the end of this year, they reckon, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, Steam. So that could be another subscription, you know, tier that uh, Steam I mean, comes they, out with. Yeah. They tried it. They that that, that that the Steam box, which was supposed to be, you know, that. Yeah. You know, and they had the big TV, I think it was called, and they had their own the Steam haptic controller, and you could, if you play PC games on your home TV and stream it all, blah blah blah, and yeah. That, Disappeared without a trace, and I guess this is a, a new variant on that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should do something. Yeah, all right. So, 
It's time now for Dan's Retro Topic of the Week. So uh, every so often, or <laughs> almost every week, I should say, Dan comes out when with a topic I in the uh, can be asked. Or from the world <laughs> of uh, retro gaming. So Dan, yeah. what do you have for us this week, man? <laughs> Uh, I, I, I've I been watching a few videos uh, about uh, games. Actually, kind of on the thing you were talking about, about how games that didn't happen and stuff. But yeah. one of the things I, I was uh, taking down the rabbit hole on was uh, about Sonic 3. Oh. Because, mm. um, also, can I, get, I just want to mention, there's an awesome podcast about Sonic the Comic. Mm -hmm. There was a comic in the UK called Sonic the Comic, and these guys make a hilarious podcast about it. Look it up, it's really funny. They just awesome. go through the episode and they go through the issue and talk about it, and they talk about like Sonic and Sonic cool. games. Anyway, so I talk about Sonic 3 and like, you know, last uh, a couple of years ago, the, the Mega Drive Classic came out, right? Yeah, and it had Sonic One, Sonic Two, and Sonic <gasps> Spinball. Uh, <laughs> there was no Sonic Three. Don't laugh at Sonic Spinball. Sonic Spinball is great. No, I'm oh, saying, my, well, no. why wasn't Sonic Three put in there? Yeah. Why indeed? Now, why do you think it wasn't on there? I don't know. Licensing issues. I don't know. That that is an issue. That is a factor in it. Um, but basically, like, there's uh, the, the the most cohesive theory now. I mean, it's still uh, it's still kind of undecided, uh -huh. but it's all most down to uh, Michael Jackson's involvement in the game. Oh, now famously, it's been an open secret that he worked on the game and did music for it, right? <laughs> yeah. And for years, Sega's been like, nah, 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 never happened. We never did that. And his uh, like Jackson State's always been like, nah, 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 he never did. But apparently, that's been one eighty now. A bunch of reviews by people who worked on Sonic Three back in the day have been like, oh yeah, yeah, no, he came and he wrote loads of tracks. Mm. Um. So two things happened while they were making Sonic 3. Um, so they get quite into, into development in Sonic 3, and uh, Mark Jackson has a bunch of tracks made for it. And then around this time, the first allegation hits about uh -huh. his hobby. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and um, so all of a sudden, Sega's like, oh, shit. We've got someone who may be messing around with the kids, yeah. making the music for our game. This is not good. Yeah. So they start to distance them themselves from from right. michael jackson obviously and also to their benefit to sega's absolute benefit michael jackson report reportedly rumoredly says um i'm making this music but it sounds completely shit running mm. through the mega drive coming out the, the sound that the the game's making on the on the yamaha effect which is don't get it wrong the sound chip in the mega drive is amazing yeah. it's great it sounds amazing but he was like this doesn't sound what what i want it to be this, this isn't getting the results that i want yeah. So then he was like, okay, take take me off it. I don't want anything to do this project. Take my name off it. Don't do anything with it. I'm going. Bye-bye. Good luck with Sonic 3. Uh, you know, all the best. Um, and so Sega's like, oh, brilliant. So not only do we not have to pay it, well, we don't have to worry about his music being in the game. It was his idea. And we can pretend this never happened because he's not going to mention it because he wants to save his reputation. We're not going to mention it because we want to save our reputation. Yeah. They just went in the, on their own separate ways. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why it hasn't come out in in modern compilations. Like the Sega Mega Drive Classics hasn't got it either. Like the last time it was released, I think, was on uh, a PC compilation, like this, uh, the Sega the Sonic uh, Mega Collection on PC wow. was the last time we saw a port of um, Sonic 3. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting. But the reason why I'm thinking about this is because I think it was to, uh, yesterday or day before, there was a, on my news feed, there was talk of it getting a re-release. Hmm. Of a a Sonic three compilation, so that'd be Sonic, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic three and Knuckles, uh -huh. all in one uh, package. Presumably, hopefully, by the geniuses at M two or or other sort of emulation house. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, that'd be awesome. So because of the allegations and because of it of pride, we never we really see Sonic three anymore, which is uh -huh. bonkers. Because that would have been amazing. Imagine the Mega Drive Classic having all three Sonic games on there, yeah, and Sonic and Knuckles. Hmm. And Sonic 2 and Knuckles. Yeah. That'd be superb. Yeah. But yeah, there's some amazing, amazing deep dives on it. I mean, I've condensed about three hours of watching into, you know, a three-minute garbled mess on this podcast. Hmm. Um, but yeah, no, in, uh, investigate it. It's really interesting what happened. But I mean, he definitely, definitely did work on it. And there yeah. are there are some music cues. Not only, I think all the music has been removed. Hmm. But when the when the people came in to replace it, there are sort of, subtleties subtle similarities between some of uh Mark Jackson's music was working on at the time and the music that appeared in the game by these other people so um hmm. yeah it's really 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 cool really interesting cool um 
Yeah, right. so I, I, I'd love to. I, I was playing it the other night, actually. Uh, oh. um, yeah, as part of my ongoing Sonic mild interest, I was playing Sonic and Knuckles. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's, it's good. You forget. So one last thing. You forget. Like Sonic Three looks friggin' amazing. Hmm. Sonic Three on the on the Mega Drive. Yeah. It's like, Holy shit! How do they manage this? Yeah. Like it's it's odd. It's I, I mean, you know, it might be a bit hyperbole, but it's not a million miles away from like the first uh, like PlayStation One two D platformers. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a freaking solid looking game. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. yeah sorry. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Dan. So that's uh, huh. our retro topic of the week. So let's go ahead and move on to our new and up, uh, upcoming game releases uh, for the week of May 17th through the 23rd via Metacritic. There are five games on the list this week. So mm-hmm. first up, uh, coming to PC, uh, formerly a PlayStation exclusive, uh, Days Gone. So Dan, have you played any of Days Gone? Uh, the the, the 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 motorbiking PlayStation game. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I haven't played it. No, no, no. Yeah. It was uh, I think on P- uh, PlayStation Plus uh, recently. Yeah. No, it was. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. yeah. I've I've heard I've heard mixed things about it. Some people really like it. Some people friggin' hated it. Um, which probably means it's it's a good game because that's you know that they're the ones you want. Yeah. You know yeah. that you can build a more uh, build a definite collection with a connection with games that really appeal to you. So I don't, might give it a go one day. Yeah. So it's releasing on PC <coughs> on May 18th. So okay. hope never dies. At its core, Days Gone is about survivors and what makes them human. Desperation, yeah. loss, madness, betrayal, friendship, brotherhood, regret, love, and hope. It's mm-hmm. about how even when confronted with such enormous tragedy, they find a reason to live. So hope never dies. Play as Deacon St. John, a bounty hunter facing a brutal struggle for survival. Searching for a shopping. reason to live. Yes. So, yeah, I played wow. it. It's, it's a very good game. Uh, and I think it's kind of a, a downer that uh, Sony rejected Ben's offer to make a, uh, a sequel to this game. Uh, hopefully. Well, yeah. They there was a, made the first game better, shouldn't they? Yeah. Well, All there's right. a petition out there. Like over 100,000 yeah. people have signed it saying, hey, uh, you know, come on, Sony, make it. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then the director of the first game went well. And she bought it day one. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, oh, well <laughs> done, well done. <laughs> How, why not punch holes in your own boat? You yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't buy it day one, well, we don't get any money. Yeah. You're not a fan. But uh, all of you out there who haven't played Days Gone, it's a great game. Go play it. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's only as interesting. The premise is quite interesting, but. Um, yeah. I remember that. I mean, wasn't that how they announced like the HDR upgrade for PlayStation? They used footage from that game to uh, demonstrate how yeah, how good HDR it, yeah. was going to look. And um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But no, it does. It's yes, it's good. But that that guy's name is shocking. Was it Deacon, Deacon St. John? John. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus wept. That's straight out of like a nineties comic book. Yeah, that is scandalous. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right. Sorry. All right. Okay, so next up on the list is Outbreak: Endless Nightmares. Uh, it comes out comes out on May nineteenth uh, for PC, PlayStation Four, Switch, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and PlayStation Five. So experience true horror in this co op survival horror roguelike. Uh. Outbreak: Endless Night- Nightmares twists the series survival horror gameplay by adding elements of rogue roguelike gameplay. You'll need to explore, hunt for supplies, uncover clues, and fight your way through each anomaly, each consisting of semi-procedurally generated instances where both the environment and the undead are out to kill you. So, action adventure survival. I, I oh, I don't want to be that guy. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. But it, it looks like a PS3 game. <sighs> I'm watching a trailer for. It. I mean, I'm, yeah. I, no, I don't, I don't want to be that arsehole because graphics don't mean shit to me. But I'm, I'm just saying, like, yeah. This is uh, this, is this like their first crack at a game? It look, it look, it, you know, it looks, yeah, it could, yeah. it's not my cup of tea, but this thing has a huge like the people who played. Is it Dead by Daylight? Yeah, Dead by is Daylight. That cool? yeah. That's got a pretty huge and friggin' hardcore yeah. audience. Like very they, hardcore. They friggin' love yeah. that game. So I guess yep. they, they, these guys are trying to tap into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope it works for them. Yeah. Good. Next up on the le- uh, on the list, Knockout City. Uh, Knockout yeah. City was that uh, dodgeball type of game. That's uh, kind oh, of- I. Yeah, comes out on May twenty first for PS4. Oh, yeah. yeah, PS4. We... Sorry. PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah. So 
Yeah, it's the dodgeball game. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about this, didn't we? When did we talk about this? A while back, yeah. It was uh, when Sony was talking about their uh, their upcoming releases, I think. Uh... During that state of play, uh, months back, yeah. So rule the city through lightning fast multiplayer matches featuring mind blowing dodgeball mechanics. Cool. Increase your attack by passing to power up dodgeballs, targeting your opponents with a variety of specialized balls or balling up at any time to get thrown by teammates. Assemble an all star dodgeball crew with your friends for multiplayer matches in a seamless cross play experience. So, yeah. Mm. So, Knockout City. I don't know. Um, is it free? I don't think so. Uh, Bloody hell, really? Yeah. But, it's, uh, it's, it's, I, I, that's a game that I would definitely wait for, like, PS Plus or something like that. So, Oh, no, it is. It is. Uh, or, or, on, wait, PS5, on PS5. Oh, no. You, 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 there's a 10-day there's a free trial. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Trial, you know, So Just, by the way, because I was watching the trailer for it while, while you were describing it, and, yep. I, and I saw, like, all the different all the different costumes. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> microtransactions. <laughs> So I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, it's probably yeah. a free game, but it's not. You got to pay for it, and then probably yeah. get sold stupid yeah. costumes for your for your guys. But um, it looks alright. Yeah. So yeah, PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. So cool. it'll be interesting to see how this plays on the Switch because this, yeah. this looks like a game that uh, a lot of Switch owners will probably want to play. So yeah, yeah, it looks quite fun, nice and colorful. Yeah, it might be yeah. right. A lot of like Sunset Overdrive vibes to it too. Yeah. yeah. Next up on the list, Metopia coming to the Switch. Oh, yeah, May twenty first. <laughs> yeah, now, that's, that's a game that bloody should be free. This is outrageous. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry, go on. So, your friends, your adventure, your rules. So, since the dawn of ever, warriors have ba uh, banded together to fight evil. Now, me characters based on your favorite people must uh, unite to do turn-based battle and save Metopia. So it comes out on the 21st. Don't forget that when you're handing over 50 bucks, this was a free game on the 3DS. Yeah. <laughs> built into the, it was 3DS, built into the machine. Man. Yep. 3DS. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And last up on the list is Rust. Uh, oh, yeah. Comes yeah. out on May 21st for consoles, PS4 and Xbox One. So, yeah. So the only aim in Rust is to survive. To do this, you will need to overcome struggles such as hunger, thirst, and cold. Build a fire, build a shelter, kill animals for meat, protect yourself mm -hmm. from other players, and kill them for meat. Create alliances with other, pl uh, other players and uh, form a town, whatever it takes to survive. So it comes mm -hmm. out on uh, the 21st on consoles so it's been out on pc for a while but uh mm. now coming out on consoles so uh i can see this is going to be big for uh for streamers um it it already has been on the pc end but uh it's probably going to be uh bigger now with uh console players getting into it i think so. yeah 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 but uh yeah so uh yeah five games on the list so yeah. days gone outbreak endless nightmares knockout city metopia rust Dan, what's your pick of the, pick of the week this week? Uh, the first one. I've already forgotten what they were. Days oh gone. yeah, yeah, days gone. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not? I haven't played yeah. that one yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've I've already played Days Gone, so I'd probably give Rust a try. I've never played Rust before, so um, yeah. you know, because it's on the PC side. I'm more of a console gamer, but uh, I think I'd try Rust. See how it works out. See how it is compared to the other like. Uh, you know, multiplayer games like, uh, you know, uh, Battlegrounds, you know, uh, uh, some of the other ones. Uh, see how that is. Yep. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah. Yep. So before we conclude the episode, I want to let everyone know out there where you can find me on social media. You can find my website for gaming content at xbot2020.live and all my other social social media links to Twitter, Instagram, and my Discord server, uh, the Arena Podcast, and the podcast website as well, uh, at uh, Linktree, uh, mm -hmm. as well as my YouTube channels on Linktree. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash xbot2020. 
And I am also a live streamer and a Twitch affiliate on twitch.tv slash expat2020. And I do occasional gaming and special event live streams, as well as a supplement to the podcast called the Arena mm-hmm. Multi-Platform Gaming News Week in Review live stream, which mm-hmm. streams generally on Fridays. So that does mm-hmm. it for me. Dan, where can people find you? And uh, what are you going to be uh, playing this coming week? So you can find me very suddenly. Well, I usually do about once or twice a week, maybe. Uh, so yeah, I am on Twitch. Um, press start to game, all one word. So four words in one. Press start to game, uh, where I stream mostly train stuff. And uh, I'm also on YouTube, same thing. Um, and I, I'd like to announce my my rival podcast <laughs> that's going to challenge <laughs> the arena. Uh my tr- all trains all the time podcast about trains coming soon to your local <laughs> podcast newsfeed. <laughs> okay, and, Get and you on the ground floor. Gaming, uh, Bur- our uh, friend of the show and a uh, patron, Burlyman Gaming, was saying, uh, "Do I need a conductor's hat?" <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's he's my co he's my co driver. He's going to be my engineer while I'm driving. He's 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 shoving the coal into it. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> It'll be the best, best podcast ever. Oh, that's bad, man. That's bad. Shoveling the coal <laughs> into it. That is right. a vital part of the machine. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right, thanks, Dan, man. So uh, mm. to end the show, our indie recording artist spotlight. This week's spotlight is on Daniel Robinson. Scottish Amen. born and raised, but now living in California. Oh, Daniel lovely. Robinson is a singer, songwriter, producer, and multi-instrumentalist with a flair for pinning warming, relatable songs. Daniel's portfolio reveals a colorful array of stylistic influences from sultry R&B to reflective folk from his album titled Little Birds, and the song is called Those Were the Days. This has been The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, episode 38. I'm your host, Expat, along with my co-host, Dan. Hello. We hope to catch you in the next one. So take care, everyone. Peace. Out. Bye. Do you remember those long summers? We played water fights, stayed up at night, and dreamed of ways through the world. I still remember the first time I kissed you, the look on your face as I grazed your lips with my lips, our worlds collided, those were the days.
we've been together for as long as I can remember. We have history, many memories. I choose you. And 